half in the bag. Yes, I did it. You hear that, Jay? That's the sound of lightning fast VCR repair going online. Oh my God, I haven't heard this sound in 25 years. I'm assuming this isn't a fiber optic connection with at least 100 megabits per second. Uh, no, it's actually just plugged into our phone line. So if somebody calls us, we get kicked offline. What? The guy that sold it to me at the gas station said it was top of the line. And I believed him. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just going on to Rotten Tomatoes. Oh. I wanted to check the score for that new Suicide Squad movie. Oh my God! What did you learn from the internets? Well, the score is really bad. Oh, well that's no surprise. Yeah, but I found a website where somebody has started a petition to shut down Rotten Tomatoes just because they give DC movies bad scores. Oh wow, really? I wanted to get Rotten Tomatoes shut down for giving positive reviews to the Ghostbusters remake. The system is rigged. Mm. Here's what it says. We need this site to be shut down because its critics always give the DC Extended Universe movies unjust bad reviews like, one, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, and two, Suicide Squad. Oh, there's just two? There's just two listed, yeah. That counts as always? Uh, that, well, that justifies shutting down an entire website. Especially one that's owned by Warner Brothers? Yeah, definitely. The, the company that They're clearly produced. biased against their own movies. Yeah. Uh, and that affects people's opinion, even if it's really great movies. Oh my god, could you fit more grammatical errors into one paragraph? <laughs> I tell you, Jay. I just don't understand this world anymore. I know, we've got things like disease, poverty, Andy Dick, and terrorism, but clearly this is a priority. <sighs> I tell you, Jay, this new Suicide Squad movie makes me want to grab some rope, get a chair, go up into my attic, and commit to learning all the nautical rope knots. You know, like Anchor Bend. Bowline, bowline on a bite, bunt line hitch, butterfly knot, carrick bend, heaving line knot, icicle hitch, midshipman's hitch, mooring hitch, rolling hitch, running bowline, sailor's coil, Steve Dor stopper knot, Truckers hit. Oh my god, DC is back with another thing. This time it's called Suicide Squad, a film about all the executives at DC. Oh, wait, sorry. With Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, DC has attempted to differentiate themselves from Marvel superhero films by adopting a dark, gritty, more realistic aesthetic. They continue to try and be different from Marvel with Suicide Squad by featuring a giant blue laser shooting up into the sky, characters exchanging quippy dialogue, and a terrible villain with weak motivation who has an army of faceless henchmen for our heroes to kill endlessly with no moral qualms. Nothing like Marvel movies at all. The Joker, the most iconic villain in comic book history, shows up to have no relation or impact on the plot whatsoever. Thanks for nothing, Jay. What did you think of Suicide Squad? Um, why did you say that so sing-songy? I don't know. Did the movie put you in the mood for music after all the, the endless, endless pop songs? Suicide Squad, AKA paying royalties. But half the budget had to go to music. Every five seconds, there's a new fucking song. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that and why that's there. Oh, because sure. Because I know why. Because I'm a cynical man with, with a heart of coal. Um, I would describe this movie as frustrating. Fucking frustrating. I think I hated it. And that's what's frustrating, is that there was a lot of elements in it that I actually thought could have been good. And there's some stuff in the final edit that I think is actually good, but I, I kind of feel the same way about it 
that I did about that Fantastic Four movie, where the re-edits and reshoots and moving around scenes is so obvious that it's hard to even judge this as a completed movie. Yeah, it, it echoes uh, Fantastic Four a whole lot. Uh, it's, it's Studio Meddling, the sequel. Yes. Um, because I did a little reading on this, and it's very similar to the Josh Trank debacle, although David Ayer didn't like publicly say horrible things about the studio that will ensure that he never works again in Hollywood. <laughs> um, I think, I, think I, I feel very sorry. Uh, f are they saving money on budget by hiring, like, like, C-level directors, like... Well, they're hiring people for these fucking movies that have a voice. Someone like Josh Trank, who's made a movie with a vision. Uh, David Ayer has done movies with a vision. Why hire these people? Why, why, like, why hire someone that, that is a director, that has things that they want to say, yeah, and, then and, then, and then just change it all later? Hire Brett Ratner, who will do whatever the fuck you want. Yes, yes. It makes no sense to me why they keep hiring these people. Well, also, they need to... They need to figure out what the fuck they want to do before they start rolling the cameras. Well, that's the problem is they don't know what they want until they see what they don't want. Well, they don't so. know what they want until they see what others have made that is successful. Yeah, and because then take the footage you already have and rearrange it to try and get it to the tone of something else. Yes, th that's exactly what happened here because like you said, I can also see a movie uh, in this mess. Oh yeah, because the first half of this movie is a complete mess complete mess. It feels like, the first half of this movie feels like a sequel because it keeps cutting to these flashbacks and the flashbacks are clearly at one point were full scenes that had been like chopped up and truncated and when it cuts to them it's like oh we're cutting to footage from the first movie but this is the first movie Yeah. and like the Joker's just there, the most iconic uh, superhero villain ever and it's like oh there he is, he's just in a scene. I wish I could see that scene because it might be interesting where you have Harley Quinn before she goes nuts and she's this therapist or whatever, and it's like, oh, I would like to see that. Oh, we're out of that scene now. Now we're back to Viola Davis explaining that they have to assemble this team. And then the minute that ends, she goes into a boardroom and explains that they need to assemble a team. There's a lot of repetition in this movie. Yeah, um, and, and her assembling a team to fight this threat, she unwittingly creates the threat. That was the most frustrating part. Is like she's like, we we need to we need to assemble this team because Superman he turned out to be a good guy, but the next person like him to come down to our planet might not be a good guy. So we need to assemble Harley Quinn with a baseball bat to combat Zod. <laughs> What the fuck is she gonna do? What is Jai Courtney with a boomerang going to do against a, a super-powered uh, uh, alien from another planet? Yeah. So that plan's stupid. She says, hey, uh, Enchantress, this witch lady, you're gonna be in charge of the Suicide Squad because I think that they can do something for some reason. And then immediately the Enchantress turns evil and, and uh, becomes the main bad guy of the movie. And then Viola Davis is like, we need to stop Enchantress. I told you, 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 like this whole thing is your fault. The entire movie is Viola Davis's fault and it makes her look like a dumbass. When they comb through the, the Entrantress witch, witch lair, they never found the little, little bottle that held her secret evil brother. <laughs> Get some clay and a kiln and make a little bottle to put the Enchantress back in it. It worked, it worked in, in, uh, in ancient times. Sure, yeah, sure. It might work again, I don't know. how. I guess they had to ca say some magic words or something, and we don't know those anymore. <laughs> so they couldn't put them back in, the, in a very fragile, breakable bottle. Also, what fucking person who calls themselves an archaeologist finds an ancient thing and, like, cracks it? <laughs> oh. They pick up that shit very carefully, Jay, <laughs> and they put it down, and they go, eh, I'm touching this. She goes, yeah, I'll just break this, eh, whatever. Maybe, what the fuck? Maybe she's new to it. This she, is her first, uh, uh, her first time out. She, she was like uh, an archaeology student, mm -hmm. you know. And she, she, she was sick the day they, uh, they taught the lesson. <laughs> Don't break artifacts. <laughs> <laughs> 
was this uh, cheerleading tryouts. Hi, boys. I have a feeling the original edit, like the first half of the movie, was these weren't flashbacks, and this was just like here's a character, and here's what they're doing. Here's the other character. Yeah. Here's a, I, I was thinking of uh, the movie Sorcerer, directed by William Friedkin, which that's sort of a, a, a group of, of misfits band together for a mission that starts about halfway through the movie. The first half of the movie is, here's one of these characters, they really establish him, and then here's another character in another part of the world, and they really establish who that is. And then halfway through the movie, they get to the mission. I kind of felt like that's what maybe the original cut of this movie was mm. before they fucked everything up and threw the, the footage into a wood chipper. Well, yeah, it's, it's a lot of characters to introduce, though, and, and you would need that really slow pacing. Yeah, I have a feeling that's what it was. But the weird thing is, they, they try and introduce them all quickly with these jump cutty flashbacks, and then after they're done doing that, we're reintroduced to them again, where they go like cell to cell, and it's like, we know who these are now. Mm. It's some fucking mess. And then in the third act of the movie, at the start of the third act, we get a flashback to something that happened in the first act of the movie. We already saw this. It's not even giving us new information. It's just, here's that scene you already saw. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a, the first half of the movie is a terrible mess. And then that ending, um, you kind of get uh, uh, an, an idea of what the director was going for. Mm -hmm. The best scene in the movie is when they all just kind of go, ah, fuck, fuck you, we're gonna go in the, this bar and drink. Yeah. And then, you know. Well, that's where the movie slows down a bit. It slows down, yeah, and they do some characterization and I was like, oh God, uh, Joel Kinnaman, don't come in <laughs> and say you're in love with the Enchantress and that's the reason why we're, and, and he goes, ah, I love her. <laughs> oh God, no, other than that, it was a really nice slow scene, and then after that, everything got very dramatic. Yeah. And and you and I was like, okay, this is kind of working for me. I like the dark tone. I like it. And well, um, I like the dark tone in contrast with how weird everybody is. It's not yes. going for like jokey, quippy. It's just these are just weird characters. Right. And I liked that. I didn't like the villain, and that's what killed the ending for me. Is all the the CGI witch flying around and the. The laser going up in the sky. I didn't like that stuff, but yeah, like you said, I can see what he was going for. I, I kind of did like that part mm. because I'll explain to you in a minute. But you felt you saw kind of what what he was going for and how and, and the the thing that ruined the movie for me was yeah, it's like DC it panicked. They saw how successful Deadpool was. Deadpool was very very lighthearted. Yeah, very funny. And then you have Guardians of the Galaxy. And I think what I read was they did test screenings, as they always do, and people were like, eh, it's not funny, uh, but it's not dark. Yeah. And then the, the studio's like, yeah, we'll, we'll try and do both. We'll find the best of both worlds. Well, the we'll story the is they, they had multiple editors doing different cuts of the movie. Mm -hmm. they, had a, they hired a trailer house to do a cut of the movie. Yeah, and I think that's park. the yeah, trailer break. So I think they went with that version where it's like, let's cram in as many pop songs as we can. The first ten minutes of this movie. I feel like a big trailer. It's like five pop songs in a row. It's just endless. And they're all so obvious. Yeah. Like as far as uh, you know, the lyrics to the song. I was thinking of the Watchmen movie. Mm. That does that too, or it has really obvious songs. Talk with you again. And I'm and I'm watching these scenes and I'm picturing them without the music. And, and so it's almost like, yeah, tonally, it's, it throws it off. Yeah. It, it's like, hey, we're, we're Guardians of the Galaxy. We're funny and, and you know, quippy and there's humor. And, and I have a feeling that it wasn't supposed to be like that, with the exception of Harley Quinn and her little, like, lines that she throws out. As well, that's the, her character, though. Comic it's relief, fine, basically. yeah. yeah. And, and she's the best part of the movie. Mm -hmm. Margot Robbie, Robbie. How do you pronounce it? I think it's Roby. Whatever it is, she is great in this. And I actually liked Will Smith in this quite yeah. a bit too, which is surprising because I normally don't like him, but he's, he's way more low key. And he's of course the heart of the movie because he's got a daughter and there's that connection. And when this movie just slowed down and focused on them, I liked some of it. Yeah, but the, the Harley Quinn, other than her, like it, it doesn't make sense for them to use her. Uh, obviously she's the Joker's girlfriend, so don't let her out of that cage yeah. because that's just inviting disaster because he's going to try and come get her. By the way, when they let her out of the cage and they're heading into the city for their mission, she's like texting the Joker. Mm -hmm. Why does she have a cell phone? 
Why the fuck did they give her a cell phone? Uh, <laughs> maybe she hit it in some crack. Okay. I really couldn't tell She's you. She's had it in there for years. Maybe she found one while they were walking around on the street. I really don't know. <laughs> but yeah, she's. that's a bad idea. Plus, she's clearly mentally unstable. Yeah. And, she's a, and what is she going to do? The only person that has any abilities that would help them is maybe the pyro guy. Yeah. Jai Courtney with a boomerang. Like, what's he going to do yeah, against a, a super-powered uh, uh, witch demon? Oh, I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to hurt you. Really. Really bad. That's awful. <laughs> Don't forget, we're the bad guys. I know this is heresy, but it had a little Ghostbusters vibe. I was thinking it, of uh, the end of Ghostbusters yeah. with the witch at the end yeah. and all the. Yeah. She gets like she gets like this this. She's the witch, and she becomes like petrified, and then it's like she peels her skin off. It reminded me of goes or dogs. And, yeah, yeah. And then I'm gonna open the portal. I'm a I'm an interdimensional, unstoppable creature. And then so you got this like ragtag group of like people that are have all these different weird abilities, and they're like, here, go stop this. <laughs> I was just wondering why Batman didn't show up <laughs> and try and help. But Ma Batman does show up in the movie. Yeah. He punches a woman in the face, which is sort of weird. Mm -hmm. I found that off-putting to see one of the most famous superheroes of all time just punching Harley Quinn right in the face. Multiple women get punched in the face in this movie. And now that I'm like, like it, if it's appropriate, it makes sense, but in this movie it was weird. One time it's played for laughs, that Slipknot character. That's another thing too, is like after we establish all these characters and then it's like, oh, and here's another guy. Mm -hmm. And he gets out of a vehicle and just punches a woman in the face. Unlike Ghostbusters, which features three white ladies who are academics and a black lady who works in the subway, this film was a very diverse collection of characters. We have, we have a Latino man, we have a Japanese woman, uh, we have a black man, we have a white lady, yes. we have an Australian, and we have, uh, and they're all led by an African American female who's who's very powerful in the government. Sure, it's it is. That's all great, but they're all played as like really simplistic stereotypes. No, there's no there's no racial stereotypes. They're they're just uh, they're just mostly bad people, and and no one is championing this film as. The, the model of cultural diversity as it should be. I mean, yes, they're all villains, but that aside. <laughs> they, they're all bad guys and stereotypes. They but. all do the right thing at the end, which is stop an intergalactic monster. <laughs> That's awful. Oh, there's an escape from New York thing where they all have capsules in their neck, so they have to do the mission. And then the, what's that guy's name? The Robocop remake guy? Joel, Joel Kinnaman. Joel Kinnaman. He was on a great program called Well, he's the one that's in charge of this. It has the lady on it who played, uh, 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 u
uh, which it's not. It's PG-13. Lots of people get murdered in this movie. Lots of people get shot and killed. There's no blood, but it's very violent. There's lots of shooting. And the characters are, you know, they're anti-heroes. They're bad guys. So I don't know who the audience is for it. People with ADHD? Because it doesn't make any fucking sense. Well, there, well at our screening, there, I was wondering this. You know, and at our screening, there was a lot of weirdos. Um, there was there was a, a, a smell of pot in the air. There was I a noticed. smell of pot in the air, but there there were also like like weirdos. You'd see like I don't know at like a like a, a dingy bar or a rave or you know you know what I mean. Like yeah. it wasn't like your typical like it wasn't comic book nerds. It wasn't comic book nerds. Not like the overweight guy with with the Captain America shirt on and the big beard. And, you know, who's eating popcorn. It was like like. I don't know, like weirdos came out of the woodwork. Like, yeah. Like, like all the tattoo parlors were empty. <laughs> you know, like it was just like. I, I guess I can see it based on the marketing. Like it looks like it looks like Hot Topic the movie. Yes. It looks like Hot Topic threw up all over Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. And that's the movie. Jared Leto's uh, Joker looked like uh, Marilyn Manson. <laughs> in uh, the the music video. He, for, he was uh, a Scarface Juggalo. Yeah, yeah. Talk, I guess we should talk about Jared Leto. Have you ever seen the Marilyn Manson cover of um, Tainted Love? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where he's he's goth gangsta. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what it reminded me of. But yeah, yeah let's talk about Jared Leto. Uh, well, he's barely in the movie, for one thing. He's in about 10 minutes of the movie. He has no connection to the plot. He's not in any scenes with anybody else except for Margot Robbie. Uh, and no, he, he has that talk with the, he, a drug dealer who, who he offers, offers Margot Robbie as a sex slave to him, and then, and, and then he says no, and then he kills him. Right. Was that a double cross? What was that scene? The guy, the guy acted completely justified. <laughs> he's like, why don't he's like, you? No, this is no. Why don't you have sex with uh, my girlfriend? Here? Yeah. And he's like, I'd like to, but, but she's no. a lady, so no. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, that was unclear, but but uh, my point is he has. That was many, a scene that happened that made no sense. There was another scene where there's the uh, guard at the prison that's at like a casino or whatever. Yes. And they drag him to the back room, and the Joker says some things, and has no connection to anything. What was that scene? I what I threw. <laughs> What I thought was going to happen was, Joe, which which kind of happened. There, there, it was brought up later, but the Joker takes the guard in and, and basically says, "You're going to let her out of jail." But th then then it's like then the, the the Suicide Squad team, led by Viola Davis, come in and they take Margot Robbie out. Yeah. And she's like, "I'm leaving now." And then he the guard's like, "Wait, wait, wait a minute!" You know the. Uh, Joke is gonna be mad at you, and then that was the end of it. Yeah, it served absolutely no purpose. Maybe in the original cut of the movie, things made more sense. I have no clue. Well, that's um, what every uh, every film goer needs to say after watching <laughs> the movie. Maybe it made they should, sense they should before put they released the movie. They should put disclaimers before these movies that say like, uh, "This movie did make sense yeah. at one point in time." <laughs> This Enjoy? Movie, question mark. This movie was really good and made a whole lot of sense. And then we fucked it up and released it to you <laughs> because we got scared. Yeah. And we're constantly looking at other movies instead of like having the balls to release a movie the way it was intended to be released. We had committees and mar market research people and pre-screenings and and all these people going this take this out this this. this. You're saying you needed to do this. You needed to do this. And those are questions or things that were being said after the movie was shot. Right. And they didn't have the nerve to release it, probably. This is all uh, speculation. Well, it's like Fantastic Four. We'll never know. We'll never, we'll probably, I mean, maybe this movie will get like, they did the Batman v Superman extended right. cut. Maybe they'll do an extended cut of this and it'll make sense. I don't know. Because um, it feels like a lot of this is the result of reshoots, too. So it's like, if they do an extended cut, will it be that original version before they did that? Who knows? Yeah. It's all uh, speculation. Yeah. All I know is that Jared Leto is the worst fucking Joker ever. Why do you say that? He didn't even seem like the Joker. He just seemed like a yeah. slightly quirky thug. Yeah. I mean, unless you're going to spend a lot of time on the character, like, no, the Nolan movies did. Right, where, where he actually has something to do with the story. That yeah. would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, the Joker really should have, like, he should have shown up at the end and kind of, like, 
foiled their plan to stop the bad guy by, you know, doing something like. Yeah, or Joker even the, the the final scene of this movie. Well, I, we won't get into spoilers, but... Oh, I mumbled spoilers hours ago. Okay, I guess we don't care. The movie sucks, don't see it. So the end of the movie is is the, everyone's back in prison, uh, and the Joker shows up, and he breaks her out. Like, if that was the okay. first time you saw the Joker, like a lead-in to a future movie, maybe that would work, but mm -hmm. just having him be there at the beginning of the movie in a, in a uh, sloppily edited flashback, that's not how you introduce such an iconic villain. Can we talk about the part where... He asked uh, Harley Quinn if she would die for him, and she said yes, and then she threw herself into a vat of uh, uh, horse semen. <laughs> and then, he, and then he, he waited and then went, uh, and then I'll jump in there in. too? Yeah, I don't know. Was that to imply that that weird chemical gave her some kind of superpowers or? I have no fucking clue. I mean, we know the Jack Nicholson Joker fell into a vat of chemicals, yeah. and that's what made him the Joker. Made him bust his face up. Yeah. So maybe that has some connection. I have no idea what that was supposed to be. Because they showed her getting, like, uh, uh, electroshock yeah. treatment, um, and that's what fucked her up mentally. Uh, but but uh, uh, did she train with, like, a, a martial arts master? <laughs> or, or like what, what, what gave an average psych psychiatrist, psychologist, uh, the ability to be like a kung fu master. Did we know that? Oh, uh, it was the power of bad screenwriting. Oh! Is that, is that the superpower that, that turns your hair rainbow colored and parted to the side? <laughs> <laughs> we got you! <laughs> Come on back. We're watching, we're watching, um, uh, pass through. Pass through soon. Whenever it's available. Pass through is my fourth theatrical feature film. But yeah, like uh, I, the second half of the movie, I I can't say that I hated it. The second half gets better. There's still parts that feel truncated and rushed, but it, it at least feels like a, a, a linear series of events that happen in the order they're supposed to, yes. as opposed to the first half, which is a giant clusterfuck. Yeah, you don't feel any kind of like forward momentum, like of, of excitement, like we got to stop this interdimensional monster. Yeah. You just, you just sort of feel like you want to shower. It's exactly what you would expect when a studio meddles with a movie and just uh, does panic mode editing. Stop meddling with the movies. If you're going to hire David Ayer, and uh, I'm sure he had a pitch, I said, this is how I'm going to do it. Then just let him do it. <laughs> and, it's, it's, and don't listen to your test audiences. Yeah. Or just hire Brett Ratner. Or just hire Brett Ratner. And then, like... He'll do whatever you want. Every phase of the production have uh, marketing and uh, pitch meetings and go, we're going to tweak this. You don't even need a director. You just need a boardroom of executives. Like, like shouting orders from like like a, a, an iPad. <laughs> Behold the voice of God. So Mike, would you recommend uh, Suicide Squad? Just say no. You can do it. Are the wheels turning of who to recommend it to? No, not really. The wheels are turning because, because I didn't hate it. Uh, I, I, it, 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 it didn't have that like, like I hate you, Zack Snyder. You know, you obnoxious prick. It no, had, it had that. Uh, 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 this could have been good. It, it, it made me hate all the the higher ups. Yeah. Like, and then that's why it was so frustrating to me. I hated the movie because it was so clearly fucked with to the point of almost being incoherent for the first half. Right. It, the first half is fucking terrible. The second half gets a little bit better, but by that point, so much damage has been done. It's like, I can't get into this movie now. And then we have one nice scene where they're all hanging out in a bar. That's the only scene in the movie that I liked. Yeah. There's moments throughout the movie that I liked, but that's the only full scene where I was like, okay, I can see what they were probably going for. Yeah, it's not worth it for that scene alone. And, no. And it's not like you could say, well, there, it, there were a lot of funny moments because there really weren't. It was very dark, but it, I, I don't know. I, I, 
I was somewhat aware of, of the studio meddling and the problems, and I was very curious to see it, to kind of see, look, watch on the screen, like, okay, that's from that, that's wrong, that doesn't make it, it, almost like an analytical perspective. Oh, sure. I, I enjoyed it on that level. Yeah. And yeah. To, to watch the, uh, the, the Hindenburg, <laughs> the giant DC logo on it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the meta-humanity. <laughs> well, one of the supporting roles in Suicide Squad, a random government agent man, mm -hmm. uh, is played by actor David Harbour. Oh, I see you're a big fan of his. I, I'm a huge fan of David uh, Harbour. I've been following his work for years. Mm -hmm. But in addition to Suicide Squad, he is also on the Netflix series, Stranger Things. You guys getting paid by Netflix now? Yes. Oh, I love checks. <laughs>